31, we're gonna look at one of our toolkit functions. We're gonna take a look at it up close right now. And then we're gonna transform it a little bit. So here's our absolute value function, right? So if you see absolute value of x, know that the domain is all real numbers. Take note, we don't have a fraction, we don't have a radical, we don't have a logarithm, so my domain stays all real. Nothing I need to, to give the boot to. The range is going to be from zero to infinity because when you're talking about absolute values or your basic absolute value function, your toolkit function, you're not gonna get any negative numbers popping out of this. That's the whole point of the absolute value. We're just tracking distance and we don't care if you're left or right of zero. So I'm gonna get zero to infinity. The lowest number would be the absolute value of zero, zero, right? You can see that in the vertex right here, the, the turning point. So the absolute value is continuous, excuse me, the absolute value function is continuous on its entire domain. So even though it's defined as a piecewise function, you can see that I don't need to lift my pencil. I can just continue to draw it with one fail swoop. The absolute value function decreases from negative infinity to zero and increases on zero to infinity. And just take note that these increasing and decreasing intervals are always using parentheses. And here is our graph. And we've graphed this a few times, but this is your official toolkit function. So with that, keeping that graph in mind, we're gonna transform our graph. We're gonna read a word problem and see what it, we're being asked to do. All right, so let me scooch this up so I can get our graph in view. Okay, I think we got it there. All right, so this now says, write the equation for the absolute value function that is horizontally shifted left two units, vertically flipped, and vertically shifted up three units, and then we need to graph that function. Okay, so I have a bit of transformation to do. So before I get to my official function, I'm gonna start with the absolute value. Let me start with my toolkit, and then let's go through these transformations one, one shift, one, one transformation at a time. So it says horizontally shift left. All right, when you're shifting left and right, that will happen inside your grouping symbols. And in this case, that means inside the absolute value. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna do x minus two here, right? Remember that when you're doing things horizontally, when you're stretching and shifting inside the grouping symbols, it's counterintuitive. So when I go left to, oh, and as I say that, when I go left to, I'm sorry, if it's counterintuitive, I need to do x plus two, all right? So left to, I know when I was initially going through this, I would think, oh, I need to subtract two. But when it's inside the grouping symbols, it's counterintuitive. All right, so I've got left to. The next thing I need to do is vertically flip. Well, if I'm vertically flipping, or anytime I flip, whether I reflect over my x or y axis, I have to add a negative symbol. And it comes down to do you add it inside the parentheses or outside? Well, when it's a vertical flipping, you're gonna add it outside the parentheses or I should say in this case, outside the absolute values. You wanna add it outside your grouping symbol. So here we go, negative absolute value of x plus two. All right, so I'm, I'm getting there. And then the last thing I need to do is shift up three units. Well, if I'm gonna shift up three units, again, I'm either gonna add or subtract a, a number, and this time I'm gonna add three number, uh, add three because I'm moving up, and you, you'll either add inside or outside, but we already talked about when you shift left, right, that's when you add inside. So when you're shifting up down, you're gonna add outside of your grouping symbol or outside of your, your function. And our grouping symbol here is the absolute values, right? So here becomes my function. So we're gonna go f of x equaling negative absolute value of x plus two plus three, right? And the first direction says write the equation. Well, I did it. All right, now it says graph this function. And you can use technology to graph this, but I just wanna practice doing it on our own. I'm gonna do a couple of examples, or a couple of points with you, and then I will go check it on my graphing calculator just to make sure I'm not making a mistake. If I was gonna graph the original um, square root function, let me do, I'll do zero, zero, let me do five, five, and then let's do negative five, five. And you can pick any points, but I only wanna try three of them just because I'm not gonna do this for every single point. 
on our original absolute value function. So keep in mind, our original absolute value function, right, looks like that V with the vertex right there at the origin. So let me erase my little outline. And let's see what would happen if we moved all of these points. Okay, so let me start with my vertex, okay? It says horizontally shift left two, so I'm gonna go one, two. Vertically flip, well if I vertically flip and I'm on the x-axis, I stay on the x-axis. And then shift up three units, so one, two, three. So I think my vertex is gonna get transformed from zero, zero to negative two, three. So I'm gonna erase that because I transformed it. All right, let's try this one. First of all, I need to shift left two, so one, two. I need to vertically flip. Well, if I vertically flip, if my pencil is at negative three, five, it's now gonna be at negative three, negative five, okay? And then I need to shift three units up, so I need to go one, two, three. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna write, I think I'm at the point three, negative two. Um, this one we said was negative two, three. And I'm putting that here, because I, I, I will plug this into my calculator and see if I'm right, because I make mistakes all the time. So, so let's see how well your teacher's doing. All right, so let's try this last one. I need to shift left two, so one, two. I need to vertically flip. So again, this is up at five. It's gonna come down to negative five. And then I need to shift up three units. So one, two, three. Okay. And you can pick any points that you wanna do this with. I just happened to pick zero, zero, five, five, and negative five, five. So this one is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think this is negative seven, negative two. All right, so that's my guess. I can kind of see the V hanging out there and it should be an upside down V because I have that negative symbol out in front. So let's go get our calculators. I'm gonna put this into my Y equals, hit zoom six, and then use my table to see if I got any of these points right. So let's see what's in my y equals. Let me clear this out. So we have negative, and for absolute value, again, math, go to num. We've got option one for absolute value. I have x plus two in there, and then I need to add three. I'm gonna hit zoom six because I'm on a new problem. I wanna reset my window. All right, that doesn't look too far off from what I thought I might be getting. Now let's go see if my vertex was correct. So let me hit second and table and see what we had. I thought the vertex was at negative two, three. It looks like it is, right? I have that point, negative two, three. I also see over here three, negative two. I thought I had that point. Let's see if I got negative seven, negative two. Should I? Yep, negative seven, negative two. So when I take a look at that, I can see my graph pretty well um, on, on my calculator and on my actual coordinate system. Um, taking a look at my graph right now, I do still need to scale this, so I'll put the 10 here and the 10 here. All right, and let me get this out of the way so I can finish graphing it. This was negative seven, negative two. All right, so I've got a pretty good looking absolute value function. It has been shifted left two units, up three units, and reflected. All right, and the graph I have on my paper, oops, excuse me, is matching the graph I have on my calculator, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right, section 3.6 is a short one. We only have one more function or one more example to do, and then we'll call it a day. I'll see you in a bit, gang. Bye.